Hello, everybody! Anime Reflux! Yay! Woo! Yeah. Well, kind of woo. I mean, the show this we show. watched this time was, uh, we all experienced the little nighthead. And what, does that, what does that even mean? While, while it was kind of thrilling while it was going on, afterwards it just kind of left, uh, I don't know about everyone else, but it just kind of left me feeling a little hollow and empty inside for a little bit, but I got over it pretty quickly. Yep. I don't know what the urban dictionary definition of that is, nor do I want to. Let's just focus on the not bad, but not really. Okay, so... As opposed to uh, Night Wizards, we, we reached the second in the Night Trilogy, that is not of which I don't know how many there are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, so, basic premise of this is the completely wrong fact that we don't use 70% of our brains, and if we could use all those 70%, boy, we could sure have psychic powers. Yeah. I mean, okay. This thing, one... It's ninety percent for for one thing, but exactly for another. There is a way to make this trope actually make sense. I mean, based on how the subtitling was done, I assume this was made pretty a uh, while ago. So maybe not quite as common knowledge that this was bullshit yet. But even so, you can still make the trope kind of work if you say like the human brain isn't. 100% active all of the time so if you could you know treat it like a computer and just have it run 100% all of the time then you could you get certain die. powers you, you would die and that also fits in with the Japanese trope of hey you get superpowers but you're gonna die in like 10 years that's also a thing they like to do so they could have a two for one there okay so the opening for this show, um, if you can call it an opening, is a lot of quote unquote dramatic music and guys just staring at things and then it explains the concept, which this 70% thing is called Nighthead Genesis, or Nighthead specifically, I guess. I really hope it... not, though. But... <laughs> That's well, what they're calling it. Yeah, patient. I'd call the images not so much dramatic as tranquil. I mean, we get we get cosmic images. We get images of each other. We get the ruins of a cityscape. I believe just images where there's nothing else to uh, to disturb them. I suppose. Hmm. It's it's a case where like it, the soundtrack isn't helping this because I don't like the soundtrack for this part. Um, it, it sounds bad, and then you pair that with the the wrong uh, pseudoscience. It, they got the pseudoscience wrong, and it just it feels dumb. Here's the thing: they only mentioned it once. I they, know, but so they, why they mentioned it in that I'm talking part. about the opening, the very I, opening. I know that, but that's like. You're harping on it when it was only like ten seconds of the show. It just it makes it feel dumb for me. There are um, other reasons that the show feels dumb. That's not the one. We'll, we'll yeah. get into that in I a mean, second. I mean, th there's there's nothing worse than <clears throat> a sci-fi or you know whatever type of show where you know where it's getting the rules of the universe wrong, like. Physicists hate any kind of fantasy crap because it breaks the rules all the time. Like, that's just the straight-up thing that happens. Like, I'm fine with breaking the rules, but if you're going to break the rules... Do something with it? Yeah. And, and don't just do what everybody else does. Which is what we have here. I mean, or young kids showing... Uh, very intense displays of superhuman ability given up and given to a psychic research facility of some sort. That's a tired plot at this point. It's a predictable plot. 
Let me let me just double check. I want to see when this came out because I'm curious now. Yeah. Um, and really, there's not much that goes on in the show except they're they show the psychic abilities. They're taken to the facility. 2006. They're, hmm. they're trapped at the facility. Then they escape from the facility and run into trouble in the outside world. Summed it up in one sentence, five different bullet points. Not, not great. Well, um, you missed out the part about the one scene where there was a girl that was precognitive and also Batman, apparently. <laughs> she turns away, vanishes. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know Batman was a Japanese high school girl. What a twist. <laughs> I'd watch a show where Batman was a Japanese high school girl. I'm never upset about the stealth high buy thing. It's it's pretty enjoyable, in my opinion. Um, also, I've actually done that to people, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, like, no joke. I, if, you, if you move in a certain way, people just don't seem to recognize that you even, like, left... Like, I don't, I don't try to do it, but it's low key when you just my walk naturally do. away, and people just like, what? Wait, what? Um, it yeah. happens sometimes. I mean, I just, I, there was one occurrence when I was in college. I walked the full length of a lecture hall to put a paper that I had completed on the teacher's desk. Walked back to my seat, and no one noticed that I moved. Oh. Uh, my, 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 uh, my brother, so we're getting really off topic here. I just want to tell the story real quick. Um, so we were at the dinner table with uh, friends of the family, and my brother went up to go to the bathroom, and we have this ongoing joke where he, he says, uh, nobody steal my chair, because that once happened when we went to a restaurant, somebody stole his chair when we went to the bathroom, right after he said, nobody steal my chair. So while my entire family and friends of the family were at the table, I stood up, grabbed his chair, moved into the other room, and then sat back down at my chair, and nobody noticed. <laughs> People just don't pay a lot of attention to the world around them, perhaps? I don't know. So, with this show, good old Nighthead Genesis, um, one thing I've noticed is that the animation is... Uh, a lot of the time lacking in normal conversation. Um, pair that with there are several long stretches of just silence that don't really contribute to anything and I feel yeah. like this was a budget anime. There was one close to the end of the episode where they're looking at the bar and one's like, hey, we should go to the bar and the other one's like... And there's like five seconds of silence. Yeah. Five Let seconds is, ge is generous as to ha being short. That was like a good 20 seconds of just like... <laughs> just like no. staring at... I, I know what 20 seconds of nothing feels like. Thank you, Neon Genesis Evangelion. But <laughs> that was still also really egregious for just long shot of nothing happening. I'm going to go back and count it. And this was right after um, they were in the car... And there was, like, a long stretch of just silence with no interesting animation, just the same, like, practically a gif. Uh, it was... Yeah, and, and even when the uh, our, our high school Batman is talking, um, she... Her lips barely move. She barely animates at all. And then there's that, silence. That also and then the seems wind like her blows. character, to be fair. Yeah, but that entire scene is just... There's nothing interesting going on visually. It was 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. I was about to say 10 seconds, actually. Yeah. Also, a lot of, lot of telling and not showing. Like, oh my god, did you hear about that accident that happened on the highway? If you hadn't told me in a scene that we didn't show that that was going to happen, I would have been in that accident that we don't get to see. Elder Misaki passed away. Who's Elder Misaki? He was keeping up the barrier. Thanks for telling me all of that. To give it some credit, we see a weird old guy with a tranquil expression with birds nesting on him. 
in a cut right before the 15 year time skip but we do they but never... we get we get no context for that yeah, exactly. it's just an old dude in a place we get, we get no context as to who this character is what their purpose is and what their relation is to our two main brothers uh so it's just telling us everything and it feels like the show wants to do a lot in one episode, but all it really does is, like, one of the more generic okay, telepathy I will... things, storylines. Okay. I will give the show credit where it's due. Apparently, the first and second episodes were originally aired as an hour-long pilot, so it wasn't trying to cram everything into a half hour, at least. Unfortunately... This first half hour gives me no motivation to watch the second half hour of this apparent first episode. Yeah, with um, with with shows in general, and with just yeah, as a general thing for shows, movies, um, books, you want to hook people within the first couple seconds, and you want to keep that motivation to keep continuing on going. This does nothing to hook me. Um, even the beginning is just. It's not a lot happening. Um, like, there is the bit where, oh, Naya made the kid's nosebleed because he got angry, but how do they link those two things, even? Like, how do you know that the kid's nose bled specifically because one kid got angry and used second powers? Is there a yeah. visual indication for that? I don't see any, usually. I mean, logically people would probably write it off as a coincidence unless it kept happening. The yeah. kids, sure, they would assume it. The adults should know better. Exactly. And so you have that immediate, like, logical fallacy, like that kind of assumption that makes no sense from the perspective of an adult. And immediately I'm just, I'm not hooked anymore. It's just, okay, I guess immediately going off to research facility run by who? We don't have a name. Of organ- Is it just the government? Um, and now, as we get this... Yeah? There's no detail given. Just wake up, break everything as they correctly put the pieces together. They're clearly inequipped to deal with this level of psychokinesis yeah that that was a weird thing to start with for me but it also actually eventually started to make sense when i thought about it but i did have to think about it pretty hard like he mentions when he wakes up and ah scientists everywhere okay i'm going to stop holding it in basically so it stands to reason that they probably weren't particularly well equipped for this level of psychic ability because he'd never used it before. Even so, he managed to he shattered a lot of glass <clears throat> right before he stopped holding back and that alone is dangerous. Yeah. Also, please, please don't do a 15 year time skip halfway through your first episode. Yeah, well. Well. I, we missed I, so I much want to defend it. I, I want to defend it and say how important it was to establish that the ropes were a psychic shield, but it wasn't because they didn't actually explain any of that in any depth or with any Most meaning. Most everything that happens in this beginning <clears throat> could be relegated to a flashback later on, or you know. Bust down to five minutes. Yep. Yeah. Start with the kids as adults. Explore their backstory as the story progresses. Don't just shove a bunch of poorly explained backstory up in front and say, oh, we'll we'll explain the rest of it later, but for right now we're just going to jump ahead 15 years. Hmm. It's disjointed and... Yeah, it, it comes across just as you could have done this a lot better. I mean, in that sense, I suppose it being the first part of a two-parter make, makes it make more sense. Yeah. Time con- conservation-wise. But, yeah. 
Yeah, that's a little awkward. That would that would make it a, a bit more sense, but I don't know. It feels like it. It feels like all of the things that were in that kid timeline bit did actually have meaning and worth. And like there, there was the stuff with okay we're discovering the powers and it seemed that they had specific lines that they went across you know the older brother had uh, telekinesis the young one uh, telepathy and then we've got precognitive girl somewhere else so okay that's fine and then we had the um what were the other bits we had uh the kids getting drugged and it's made very clear that the younger brother absolutely knew what was going to happen but went through with it anyway the most interesting thing to me about that scene was the fact that they had <clears throat> melon soda i've heard of that before yeah it's a thing it's, in japan. Uh, it's, a, it's a thing in japan that's pretty <clears throat> common um it was weird to me that they had it in goblets that was a little odd but you know it's I'm not going to say that the backstory isn't important. I'd say you could make an arc out of the child stuff and established characters, at least make the first full episode about that if you're going to commit to it. Build the world a little bit more. Build these characters and their relationships to these other scientists. <clears throat> Maybe even establish a younger version of that girl who can is pretty cognitive. Because it, it felt like we skipped over a lot of very important details. And that's disorientating. It would have been nice if we got more time at the facility and established how unsatisfied they were even when they... Like, we don't really know how they felt about being in the facility in the 15 exactly. years they were there. We don't know how they were treated. We don't know what relationships they may have built or built. It, we don't know anything about it. And so it's hard to really get invested when you escape the escape the escape meant nothing to me because exactly what did being there mean which is why i'd say start with the escape and then build up everything ahead of time if you're good as one approach or just spend more time with them as children rather than just trying to jump immediately to the to the older versions because then that has no weight or meaning. Yeah. I mean, we basically have nothing on these characters beyond generic older brother wants to protect the younger brother thing. It's, and maybe the younger one has a... I, maybe the older one is pragmatic and the younger one is more caring or something. I... They don't feel like established characters. Yeah, it, it's very wishy-washy as far as their character traits are being displayed. It's I don't not... know. All I know. All I know is the older one's angry. That's it. Yeah. The older one's angry and is the leader of Big Brother. The younger one is more sensitive and <clears throat> smarter. I don't even know if he's smarter. He just knows what people are thinking. That's it. Yeah, I guess. It's... We've done this whole thing. We haven't even explained the, what the snops is yet. We we've gone over it. it. It's very basic. Yeah. Yeah. We've pretty much gone through all of it. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh. The precognitive is like, hey, good for you not being in the accident. Also, two brothers are going to escape from a place because Mister What's his name is like letting them or something. I don't fucking know. By the but, way, here's my big, here's my book with nonsense hieroglyphs. Yeah. Um, Batman away! <laughs> <laughs> this is a very interesting show to discuss discuss because of the writing talk that we're having. Um, but I think I, based on this first episode alone, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe it gets better later on. If you've seen the show and it gets better, please tell me. I'd be curious. Because I will not be watching the second half of this episode. 
apparently because it's a two-parter to find so, out. I'm the, feeling feeling the exact same way here. I'm not Thank particularly you. interested in this myself. You know, part of me wants to do it to give it a fair shot. And if I do do it, I'll report on it next week in addition to whatever the hell else we're doing. But I probably won't. Mm. Sad times. Well, it it and interesting discussion at least. That's yes. That's always and it a plus. wasn't. And it wasn't a bad show. Mediocre, but not bad at least. Yeah, there there is the makings of a of a pretty good show in this, but it's so fumbling it's hard to see it. Yeah, it's like a four out of ten for me, and like it's it's mediocre, but it's on the bad side of mediocre. Um, so yeah, it, it that's probably one of the worst places to be rather than just being bad. Because if it's bad enough, I can laugh at it. Yeah, that's fair. <sighs> Well, anything else for us to say? I mean, do you want me to make more nightmare jokes? I could. Let's roll another one. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. And in answer to your earlier question, Zero, there are two other shows that begin with night. At least oh, it's a quadrilogy. Got it. <laughs> Is that even a thing? Yeah, yes. that's four. Yeah. That's four. Story made of four sections. Uh, I think Abe's Odyssey, the Oddworld thing, was supposed to be a quadrilogy or something. Well, I mean, Y'all people I, learning new terms. I mean, I know that there are books that are four. I know that there are series that are four books long. I just didn't know that there was that official of a term for it. There's an official word for it. No one ever uses it because trilogy is more famous. Yeah. yeah. Duology, trilogy, quadrilogy, quintilogy, etc. They just keep going up. Fair enough. I mean, just take the root, take elegy, and that's all you need. Mm, Kenji, got it ready? Yeah. All right. 21. 21. Uh, what would that be at this point? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 is V. That's what I thought. Because we don't have Q anymore. Yes. Okay, at last count we had 15. Four of those are gone, so that leaves us with 11. 11? Oh shit, I didn't do the thing. V! There you go. (laughs) Okay, so 11 out of V is what we're doing here. Yes. Let's see. It's like 11, but they fold it inwards. Six. (laughs) I dread what we're going to get. Well, it's not Van Dread, so... Oh, maybe. <laughs> I was kind of expecting it to be. Okay. okay. You're special? Yeah, it's special for coming up with that. I fed you that slow pitch. Hmm. Well, this week's winner is called Violet Evergarden. Uh, okay. There's a dub. There is a dub. All right, let's read all that synopsis. There are words Violet heard on the battlefield which she cannot forget. These words were given to her by someone she holds dear more than anyone else. She does not yet know their meaning. A certain point in time, in the continent of Telesis, uh, the Great War which divided the continent into north and south, has ended after four years and the people are welcoming a new generation. Violet Evergarden, a young girl formerly known as The Weapon... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> has left the battlefield to start a new life at CH Postal Service. There she is deeply moved by the work of Auto Memories dolls who can carry people's thoughts and convert them into this seems like a very confused plot who can uh, carry people's thoughts and convert them into words. Violet begins her journey as an Auto Memories doll and once and comes face to face with various people's emotions and offering Shapes? Oh, differing shapes of love? All the while searching for the meaning of those... What the hell? Taking people's people's thoughts and turning them into words? I mean, if this is an art-based show, then that could... could... So, Violet Evergarden... um, That too, it's called... It aired in 2018. Um, The novel uh, actually won... um, 
grand prize in uh, Kyoto Animation's awards novel category in 2014. Um, yeah, and it was... It, it's been a very well-received series, so... Okay. I mean, people seem to like it. Well, veteran turned Netflix. singing Telegram, so, all right. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want no part of this, but I'm not vetoing this. I, I want to see this. If, if it's gotten such... Good reviews. People like it that much. There must be something to it. So we've been pleasantly surprised before. I'm hoping that we will be this time as well. One can hope. Okay, my expectations are low, so I can only be pleasantly surprised. I guess. Why not? All right. Actually, looking at, at information on this, this actually seems pretty interesting. Um, in terms of uh, what it's about. Yeah, I think, I think there might be something here. <laughs> we do then. Violet Evergarden is the anime for next week. And naturally, I will be watching the dub. I look forward to hearing probably Monica Real as the protagonist, because that's dubbing nowadays. Alright. <clears throat> so, Violet Evergarden next week. Yay, we do. Highly acclaimed Yay. and such. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Apparently the, English Bye. Voice, apparently, the English voice actress is actually Erica Harlicker. Name is familiar, but. Alright. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.